Okay, looking at question four now on page 147, continuing with 9.4, transformations and congruence. It says, uh, question four, draw triangle A, and these are the vertices, so we have the point uh, one, four, that's that one right there, uh, zero, zero, that's the origin, and zero, four. So we've got a little upside down triangle, let's just join it skillfully in red or something. So that joins to that, that goes back to the origin, and this climbs up the y-axis, so that's the best I can do really. And you can see the black underneath, you know, sorry about that. Right, that's called triangle A, and therefore we'll label it A in red. Then, rotate triangle A by 180 degrees around the centre point, should be called centre of rotation, let me just write it for you. You know it's called that. Centre of rotation, minus one, minus one, so it's right there. Now I'm going to need to think about this one, again zero tracing paper. I reckon we're going to start about here somewhere, so I reckon that's going to be that point just there. And then we're going to go straight down. In fact I will definitely pause and think about it, because I don't want to take any chances and get it wrong for you. Okay, I'm happy with that little rotation there. So I've gone from A to B, I've rotated 180 degrees around the centre of rotation, minus one one, and I've labelled it B in blue. Now translate this new triangle B using vector 6, 0 and label it C. Label it C. Okay, different colour. So, go for green for a change. 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. To the right and nothing up or down. So I'm going to start right there with my green facility here. Count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's straight down. It's not very good, is it? Start again. Straight down one unit across and then just join the ends as clearly as I can. Not brilliant but that's, that'll do. And that's, uh, I better just label it in black because it's hard, it's barely visible is it? So there we go, that's going to be C and I've gone from there to there, uh, vector 6, 0. Please note translation, vector 6, 0 and that's triangle C. Now I've got to reflect C in the line y equals minus 1. Okay then, Let's just put in the line y equals minus 1, and uh, we'll pick a colour of some sort to do that line. I usually go for dark greens, so it stands out a bit on the vid. Right, y equals minus 1, it's this one right here. So, it doesn't have to be enormous, Let's just go across here like that, because I'm reflecting this into the line y equals minus 1, and end up in this first quadrant here, hopefully. Well, yes, so let's label up nicely. That's the line y equals minus one. Of course it goes straight across there as well, but let's not worry about that. Okay, we're one unit away from the line, so the first point is there, and then we know it's going to be one, two, three, four units tall, so I'll just use my straight line facility to finish it off like that. Four units tall will be like that, and then we go one unit in, like so. Oops, start again. One unit in, and just join the ends like that. So. C is reflecting the line white was one, end up with brand new triangle D. So let's just call that a D and carry with our work. Alright, describe the single transformation that maps A onto D. These questions are getting rather predictable. So how do you get from A to D? I can see a very clear, if this pen will just please work, I can see a very clear um, line of symmetry there or line of reflection or equation into which um, A is reflected onto D. So let's just draw that in with this facility and uh, we'll get on with it. Use blue I suppose. There it is, cut straight through there. That is the line X equals 2 and the line X equals 2 is the mirror line that separates A and D. So what do we do? What Describe the signal transformation that maps A onto D. You need to reflect or reflection is better in the line x equals 2 and that will take a onto d and I'll pause and check out the next question right this is question 5 in this diagram the kite k there it is has been transformed using a number of different transformations uh, they're not specifying rotation or reflection or what have you um, one at a time describe the transformation that maps k onto l well, I've studied this one. It's rather difficult. K onto L clearly wants to, wants to rotate in that direction. Now, I've done a rough sketch here. Um, the center of rotation is, in fact, 1.5 minus 2.5. 
So if I was to try and draw a dotted line to that point, um, again, it's just a crude freehand sketch. You can see that's approximately 90 degrees. Of course, with tracing paper, you'll be able to confirm that quite easily. And that's the way to work out an exam. Just play around with tracing paper, just trying to show that 90 degrees looks sensible, even if I don't have access to tracing paper. So you're looking at, um, let's write it down, 90 degrees clockwise rotation. And it's about center and it's 1.5 minus 2.5 or 1.5 uh, minus 2.5 all right so that's that one describe the transformation that maps L onto M now I know the answer book's completely wrong on this one clearly it's, it's a reflection in one of these vertical lines now if we look between that point and that point we have got one two three units therefore the center will be one and a half units either side and if I was to draw a vertical line straight through that center, and I'll do that straight away, hopefully you can see that is the line. Tell me why, sorry, not why, um, x, x equals minus 0.5. It's not minus 1, it's not through the origin, um, it's not th um, the y-axis or the line x equals 0. It's exactly right there, if you can see where my pen is pointing, this line passing through the point minus 0 0.50, that is the line with the equation y equals minus, uh, x equals minus 0 0.5, and that is uh, what happens um, when you try and reflect m onto l. So what is it? Get a mark for saying the word reflection, and you need to say which line. Reflection in the line x equals minus 0 0.5. Okay, describe the transformation that maps M onto N. This is quite difficult. Um, I think it's up the y-axis. Let me just check the answer on this one, because I think I agree with this one. Yes, I do. Um, zero, 01 is right there. I quite like this one. Uh, I'll tell you why I like it. It's three squares along and one down, uh, three squares to the left and one up. Um, so they've probably got it right. And as you can see, if that's the, the top leading point, and that goes to this side pointing downwards, is probably a 180 degree rotation. And that's what I'm going with. It's a 180 degree rotation. And of course, you don't need to say clockwise or anti-clockwise. You end up in the same place. But you have to give the center. So it's about the point zero 01. And I'm quite happy to run with that one. And it finally says, N can be mapped onto K, so N going to K, and find the coordinates of the center of rotation. It's really, really tricky. So it's clearly a rotation of 90 degrees going clockwise, where the center is, I'm guessing around here somewhere. Again, I don't have tracing paper. And the answer book says minus 1, 2. Let's see if I believe that. Minus 1, 2. So that's the new center to map n onto k. Let's see if it makes sense for me mathematically. 1, 2, 3, 4 along, 1, 2 down. Uh, 1, 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, just gave you a little insight as to how my brain works in terms of doing it mathematically by counting squares. So is that a 90 degree rotation? Let's just use this facility to see if it makes any sense and change colour so it doesn't stand out too much. So does this look like a 90 degree angle to you. It certainly does to me. So it looks like we're dragging this, um, let's try and draw it crudely, in this direction, like so. So we definitely have a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. There it is, right there. And that will map N onto K. So one more time, N can be mapped onto K with a clockwise rotation, clearly so. And the coordinates, in other words, the center of rotation, is going to be minus 1, 2. So let's just quote that, minus 1, 2 and that's in agreement in the answer book as well. So I think I'll stop there and then look at the last couple of questions before we get into the assess.